Hey folks, David from Default Sound here, and today I'm gonna to talk about how to balance your main stage patch volume levels. We've all gotten uh, angry glares from our sound people as we change patches with a song, and we have a big drop or increase in our volume. So today I wanted to share a couple general rules of thumb, and then a couple of techniques you can try to help you avoid those issues and have a consistent signal throughout your patch changes. The first thing I wanna draw your attention to is here on the channel strip, you see this little green number that says negative 3.7. This little green number is super useful because it tells you the maximum decibel level that that channel strip has reached. So here's the first general rule of thumb. I never let any channel strip peak or reach a level above negative six to negative three decibels. Uh, anything louder than that and you run the risk of introducing digital distortion uh, compression or artifacts, it's not going to sound good. You don't want to clip your signal. So uh, no matter what the sound is, no matter how dark or bright it is, I never let it get above negative six or negative three, somewhere in that range. If it's any louder than that, then I find a way to make it quieter. I'm not talking about using the volume fader necessarily. Oftentimes I'll do it in the channel strip itself. But that's the first general rule of thumb. Never let your signal get above negative six to negative three. That doesn't just go for individual channel strips. I'll still keep an eye on my output channel strip section to make sure that I never get above negative three decibels at the most. I get asked sometimes, should I put the limiter plug in on my output channel strip, which just squashes anything above a certain volume level? Uh, my preference is to not do that. I'd rather make those decisions myself so that I have control over how the volume is reduced uh, rather than the output channel strip. You might lose audio quality it might start to sound really flat or even uh, start to distort if you're pushing that limiter and it's constantly reducing the volume of your sound. So again, first rule of thumb is never let a sound get above negative six to negative three decibels, both individual channel strips and overall volume for a patch. Now, the second rule of thumb that I follow is that not all sounds are perceived the same way. Uh, the human ear is more sensitive to frequencies that the human voice uh, is most commonly in. So upper mid frequencies and higher frequencies, our ears pick those up more uh, readily than lower frequencies. So oftentimes a darker sound like a pad or something that's more mellow, I will mix closer to negative six, negative three. But if it's a harsher or more aggressive sound like a lead synth or a pad that's super bright, I might mix it a little bit quieter, uh, maybe closer to negative eight or negative 10 decibels. The important thing to understand is that it's not just about the number that main stage tells you, it's about how that sound is going to be perceived. So when I'm working on my song list at home, I scroll through all my patches once I've picked the sounds I'd like, and I try to listen and think about how those sounds are going to be perceived. And then when I get to the venue I'm going to be performing in, I try and do the same thing, preferably with my sound person in the room so they can give me feedback about how things sound as well. When you get that feedback, you can either adjust the volume level of the plugin. If things are too loud, you can turn the volume down. Or you can use something like the EQ plugin if you're experiencing certain frequencies that are making the sound be perceived as too loud. You can use the EQ plugin to tame the low end if things are too boomy. You can cut the low mids if things are too muddy. If things are too nasally or if they're getting in the way of vocals, you can cut the upper mids around 1K or 2K. Or if things are too bright, you can use this low pass to bring everything down or this low shelf to make more gentle cuts. Uh, but the important thing is to, be uh, to acknowledge the fact that volume isn't about just the actual volume, but it's about the way that things are perceived. Most folks don't complain that the floor tom is too loud. They complain that the snare drum or the cymbals are too loud. And that's because those sounds are perceived as being more aggressive and our ears are more sensitive to them. There's also a couple things you can do within plugins to try to mitigate some of this volume. As I play this low pad, you can see it's only hitting negative 16, but as I brighten it up, the actual volume went up just a little bit, but the perceived volume probably went up a little bit more than the decibel meter was telling me. So, what you can do within EXS24 is on the matrix section here, select volume as your destination and set the source to be control one. 
and then you're going to create an inverse proportionality. So as your mod wheel comes up, your volume is going to decrease proportionally. So this allows you to have those synths and those leads that get brighter with the mod wheel and actually try to bring some of that volume down so it's not perceived as louder, just more aggressive. So that's how it works within EXS24. I'll also show you how it works within ES2. This is the sound I've got open here. And as you bring up the mod wheel, it's going to get brighter. So what you need to do is create a mapping with the target being the amp and the source being the mod wheel. And then the same thing, you're going to create inverse behavior as the mod wheel comes up the amplitude comes down now it's a little bit more touchy in es2 so you have to play with the amount that you're cutting and then you can also target one of the specific oscillators if you'd like uh, you could just target oscillator three and bring that down that'll change the character of the sound so you can play with that to get different outcomes uh, the last thing I'll talk about really quickly is the multipressor plugin under dynamics. Multipressor. This can be useful if you have certain frequencies that tend to write up or down as you play. You can target a specific band of frequencies using the visual interface here. So if we know that we're prone to low mid buildup in the room and we've got a darker pad. then you can adjust those frequencies and compress them, but not compress the rest of your signal. It can be useful if you know that you have trouble spots and you know that a certain sound might be prone to them. So that's a little bit about uh, a couple rules of thumb and a couple things you can try as you approach uh, leveling your patches. The important thing is not just look, listen, uh, pay attention to the, to the clip level indicator, that little green number, but also make sure that you close your eyes or don't look at the screen and just think about how is this sound going to be perceived. If you do that work at home and then do that again when you get to the venue where you're going to play, you'll probably see more consistent uh, and better results. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments on this video. And I hope you have a great day.